Hi, I'm David Bell with USA Mobile Drug Testing. I'm here today to talk to you about urine drug screening and why you might want to use this technology. Uh, the pros and cons maybe cover some of the myths. So first things first, whenever you're wanting to do drug testing in your workplace, you have to have a great policy. But once you get past that phase, you're probably used to for many years now using a paper form. You get a multi-part form, it's five or six parts, uh, depending on the laboratory you use or the type of testing that you're, you're doing. It's customized with your information on it. If you're DOT, DOT says you actually have to have your information printed on there, so it can't just be any random uh, third-party service person you're using or urgent care and have their information. The DOT actually makes it have to have your information, so really important to know those things. But um, our goal here at USA Mobile Drug Testing is to eliminate some of the technology challenges that you'll run into with having to use these paper forms. If you call us anytime and we need to send you somewhere, no matter where you're at in the country, we're going to give you via email directly to your donor, your employee, or if this is court-ordered testing, it's for you, it's going to come directly to you. So you're going to take this donor pass, whether you print it out or just walk in and give the barcode information directly to the person that you meet at the clinic, you're going to get your drug test done and it eliminates the need to have a piece of paper. So this is obviously a, a much more efficient way. This does a couple of things for you. On this paper form, if I'm the drug testing collector, I'm going to be filling it out. I'm writing your information from your driver's license. You're writing your phone number. Then somebody at the laboratory is going to transcribe this information. But you can imagine the number of people who touch this, you get lots of errors. So then that causes you as an employer to often have to go back and get those things changed. So moving in to an electronic process lets that information get entered once and then it speeds up the process. It's going to get your employee to a testing site much faster and that's obviously more effective and more efficient. You may notice if you're working with us on site and we come out to your location and we're testing you for randoms or emergency testing or any, any particular testing type, we're going to bring an iPad with us. We're logging into a system. The only piece of paper we have to carry is a set of labels and this is obviously for the protection of sealing the vials. Um, and, and then everything's going to get done and signed digitally. So again, there's more, more on that later in another video, but um, more specifically, let's talk a little bit about the actual testing process itself. So when you get there as a donor, you walk in, you meet your collector, they start to give you a whole lot of the rules. On the back of the form, they're going to tell you exactly what you're going to do in that process, possibly empty your pockets, show them everything that you're going to see. Depending on the type of place you've been getting testing done, we do hear from time to time when we show up to workplaces that have never worked with us before, the donors are like, well, we've never had to do that before. So we follow DOT standards as much as possible, whether it's DOT or not, because it helps us determine if somebody's cheating. We see lots of things online all the time in regards to someone saying, hey, I can beat the test every time. Well, if they're walking into some clinics, they, they can. There's definitely lots of devices on the market, whether it's powdered urine, you're using like a, a toe warmer that you might use when it's cold. And they heat that urine to the right temperature. They've got a temperature strip. They walk in. They've got that concealed somewhere on their body. The, the drug testing collector, they empty out the device and they tell you, I need this much urine. You walk in. You have privacy to do anything you want. You're not being observed, right? So that's one of the pitfalls with you doing urine drug screening versus some of the other methodologies. So what we do by following DOT processes is we're actually having you take off your outer garment, take your shirt off, um, your, your coat if it's winter, so, you, so that that additional item that could conceal something is now having to be set aside. Um, you're having to empty your pockets in front of us and show us if there's anything there. We lock that in a secure box while completing the testing process. And so that, that is going to help deter some of the people who are new at cheating. Obviously, if somebody's been doing this for years, they're using their friend's urine, you, there's not going to be much you can do to beat, uh, to catch them, they're going to beat the test. Now, uh, some of the challenges people run into is negative dilute. And so, you as a company have to make a decision, typically in your policy, how you want to handle a negative dilute specimen. 
And what, it, what does negative dilute mean? So negative dilute specifically means that the specimen provided was dilute. There's not a concentration of urine in it. There's more water and there's nothing in the specimen. So if I'm an employer, I would want to have a test done again. I want to make sure there's enough urine in the specimen so that I can get a definitive result. Obviously, if you get a positive dilute, there was something in it regardless, even though the sample was diluted. So that, that doesn't need to be done again. Um, as a donor, you probably don't know, but you've had drug tests done with split specimens or maybe a single specimen. Um, that's up to your employer, your particular policy is going to determine this, but very common, it's this way in DOT, you're giving uh, your sample, the collector's taking that, they're verifying the temperature, again another uh, deterrent that we use to, to make sure that that urine came out of the, the donor's body. If it falls below 90 degrees, or is greater than 100 degrees, that sample didn't come from that donor. So your employee is attempting to cheat that test. Um, from an employer's donor's perspective, these specimen split samples get poured off. We fill up the first vial with 30 milliliters of urine, the second vial with at least 15 milliliters. They're called vial A and vial B. And the laboratory is going to take vial A when they receive it, and that's the sample they're going to screen. Just like you might see a rapid test done in the field, if you're hiring us to come out and give you a result today, we're going to dip a card in that specimen and we're going to determine is there the presence of the metabolite using an instant card, similar to a pregnancy test. Now, you're not going to take that pregnancy test at home and, and say, hey, my wife's pregnant and, and that's it. You go to a doctor and you have it confirmed. Well, that's what we do here. We send this off to a laboratory. If you're buying just a lab-based test, that A vial is getting screened at the laboratory. If it's negative, it's reported out as negative. So your negatives come out, the results come to you much faster. If it detects something, they're gonna run it through uh, greater scrutiny, some additional testing, and then potentially MRO process where you've gotten a phone call, the doctor's looking to see if you have a prescription. So what do we do with vial B? Well, it's actually stored um, and kept in case you as an, an employee say, hey, I, I don't believe the, the result that I got. Uh, I think that, that it was wrong. Vial B is what we use as our control in order for you to have it retested. Again, that's a special request. It doesn't happen all the time. A lot of people don't even realize Vial B is available to them. And as an employee, that's your right. So if they're doing a split specimen test, you have the ability to do that. If they're not, Obviously you don't, so you may want to know these things. Uh, ask your employer to look at their policy so that you know exactly what's being done. And finally, the rapid test. So in many states, rapid tests are allowed. You can get them in a variety of panels, a five panel, a 10 panel, 12, any combination of panels, uh, whether you're looking for synthetic marijuana or, or just the standard DOT lookalike panel and we can give you that result right now. Um, so if something is negative, that employee can go right back to work. Uh, it's clear, there's nothing more to do. As I mentioned earlier, if it does show the presence of a metabolite, we do send it off to a laboratory, that gets confirmed. Um, when that result comes back, that's the result of record, and that would, that would be what you would use to either terminate an employee, have them go into their second chance program, um, or whatever your policy says happens in the, in the case of a positive. So I hope this helps you. If you have any questions, please call USA Mobile Drug Testing at 800-851-2021. USA Mobile Drug Testing.